Mm. Oh, geez. Hey guys, it's Jason here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video. Today, we are going to be taking the Rival MT-10 out for its first run. But before we do that, I wanted to just kind of check over at least the center differential for now, and I will get to the front and the rear. Now, this truck has really weird fluids. For such a small truck, you have 100 thou in the center, 60 thou in the front, and 3,000 in the rear. According to the manual, it's not 30,000, it's 3,000, which is a really odd, to me guys, kind of combination between the 60 and the three. I often, with one eight scale size trucks and monster trucks, will run something like 200, 500, or a million in the center, depending on the kind of power, 50 thou in the front, and a 40 thou in the rear, which works really, really well. So for this truck, what I've chosen to do, the diff was really low, but it did have a nice, clear fluid in there. So the actual oil itself was a quality oil. So what I did was I topped it up with 50. Because to be fair, if I was just looking at this truck and I was kind of glancing at it, trying to decide on what I was going to do fluid wise, I'd probably do something like 50,000 and then maybe 20 and 10 in the rear or something like that. After looking at the manual and seeing what they did, I still was like, I don't, to me, a hundred thou in the center of a 3S truck this size, this short of a wheelbase, I don't think is the way to go. So I added 50 to the already hundred. So, I mean, if you did the math, if it blended that way, it'd be somewhere around 75-ish, I guess, uh, thou. But either way, guys, we're going to do that. I'm going to get this thing all back together. One other thing, quick thing to show you that I think is kind of neat is you can see these holes. I'm going to grab a screwdriver. Hopefully it doesn't lose focus. You can see these pins right here. They match up to these holes. So you just have to make sure that usually you can just, as long as you line up the four holes with your diff, you're good to go. But you actually have these little pins here. So the pins kind of lock in first and then you screw in, which is kind of neat because that'll hold your gasket and all that stuff in. But either way, I'm going to get this back together. All right, guys, in typical fashion, I went ahead and finished off the truck. So here's what's going on. If you missed the first video, we got rid of the team associated gear. So the radio and the receiver, and we now have a radio link receiver in there with the built-in gyro. So I'll be running my RC8X and the front has 20 thou and the rear has 10 thou. The front stock is 60. Like I've, I think pretty sure guys, I mentioned that in the beginning of the video. Uh, is 60 thou and it's 3000 on the rear, which just seems really different for me. So, and from other trucks like this other one tenth scale MTs and all that stuff. So I decided just to tune it a little bit different before I get out. I probably would have left everything stock for the first few runs if I had thought that the diffs were kind of filled properly. A lot of the videos I'd watched did say that to check your diffs and that the diffs were pretty much empty. The center again, guys, wasn't bad. The front and the rear were pretty empty. They were like right down. So kind of glad I did that. But either way, guys, let's uh, head out and give this thing a run. All right, guys. So we're up at the top of my street. Rival MT-10. First run. Running 3S. Got a little bit of steering. Adjustments we got to make. I think we're good now. Steering's not too bad. Now, I come here all the time and unfortunately, I mention it in every video, this gravel is so like hard packed and there's nothing there. Like there's no bite or anything. So she's gonna spin a lot, but still fun to come up here and it's close to my house. Very muggy. So everything is gonna be soaking wet. So as soon as we hit the grass, it's gonna be, we're gonna have a dirty truck. Now there was a dog over here. I just wanna make sure it's gone. So with that combination that I did in the center, so the 100 with the added 50, not a lot of wheelies, but it is letting us put the power down, which is kind of nice. And this is also guys on this gravel. So you can see the minute we get into a little bit of grass where there's a little bit of bite, she wants to start to wheelie. So yeah, actually I'm kind of liking this comb combination because we can really, 
we can really pull the trigger and not necessarily have to worry about the truck going ass over tea kettle. All right, we're gonna start off a couple of small jumps. You know, it's weird listening to a metal on plastic, the pinion and spur. Okay, a little less correction than I thought. You can kind of see it took me a few times, a few tries to get that front end up. But we're gonna try that again. This time be a little bit more prepared. Oh, geez. Nice. Oh, that's nice. Okay, I'm liking this. Oh man, that thing looks so good driving around guys. This body is just awesome. Okay, so far guys, this thing is a little riot. Okay, there's some decent control there. Now I'm gonna be guys a little bit on the careful side today because I don't have any parts for this truck at all and I want to enjoy it, it's Friday. I would like to enjoy it a few times this weekend, so we are gonna be a little extra careful, but we're still gonna have some fun. Definitely wants to keep coming down on the nose. Once you get it in the air, it does feel nose heavy. It doesn't necessarily just kind of float nice sort of thing, but that's not a big deal. We can correct. Uh, yeah, you can just see the water spitting up. All right, before I know I start going crazy with the jump, we're gonna drive it around just a bit, get a little bit more of a feel for it. Gyro is sitting at 20% right now. Yeah, I like the responsiveness of it. Liking the lights. Also, if you were to get, you know, if you're pretty far away from the truck, the lights do help with orientation. Not that I would recommend taking this thing that far. It is 110 scale. 
and again it's pretty small So if you like wheelies, I would say don't do what I did. Don't go with that 50 because you definitely lose that kind of wheelie capability on this type of terrain. You're in the grass, yeah, you get a nice little bite there. fast guys this is nice like the setup that I chose with the oils seems to be pretty decent and I almost look like a good driver here right now <laughs> yeah okay I get it I get it Yeah. Oh. Uh. Hey guys this is this is good this is a lot of fun we're gonna head back to the ramp soon or I may even guys move the ramp out here <laughs> and kind of launch this way I think that's what I'm gonna do right now and then if it survives that we will come back to some more general running around I think I don't know I'm trying to get guys gather whether I want to go thicker in the center. I am liking this, so being able to just mash it and go is fun. But it would be fun just to be able to get wheelies when you kind of really get on it. move the ramp guys just over there so I think I have a better kind of line of sight to see this thing all right guys so I move the ramp over there see if I can just get a better kind of run up to the ramp being that it's a little bit more of an open area I feel like I should try to make a runway That's not working. That's kind of working. Ah, either way, let's just hope for the best.
Definitely a squirmy little sucker. All right, let's do this. Ooh, okay, I'm totally, guys, misjudging the uh, air control for the flips. I'm definitely kind of being on the conservative side and I don't think that's the way to go. All right, just the GoPro a little bit. Let's see how we do. And again, I need to stay on the throttle a little bit more. Oh, jeez. Well, no broken arms yet. That's a plus. But yeah, this, it, these tires, this, gra this gravel, this dirt, definitely squirrely. Hard to get on the throttle leading up to the ramp. I'm gonna try a little bit further back so I can kind of ease into it more, not have to gun it. Oh, I did it again. I keep thinking it's gonna kind of finish its turn and it doesn't. It doesn't do it on its own. keep hearing those plastic chassis kind of slap noises that makes me worry every time. That was better. Oh geez. Okay, there's the brake. Because <laughs> you saw how fast that brake kicked in. So what I'm gonna do, guys, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna make some minor changes with the radio to the brake. I don't know how that's, how, like how much it's gonna actually do, but we're gonna check it out. All right, so I should say, I don't even know how this is gonna work. I'm pretty sure I mentioned guys in some of the other videos that I usually just do everything on the ESC so this is the first time I've done anything on the radio. For all I know we may end up with no brake. Okay well I didn't need any brake there. Well, that was better. That was kind of put the brake on a little too soon. But the truck's still surviving, guys. Plastics are good, arms are good. Huh. All right. That seemed to have worked. Really nice truck to drive. Really nice truck to drive. <laughs> That's not what I had planned there. All right guys, what I'm gonna do, because I am curious, after what happened to the Gagakama, I don't know if you guys have seen that video yet, because I don't know if I've finished it, but I destroyed a motor because of the heat. And 
I think that's the first time I've ever done that. And when I mean destroyed, I mean it's toast. When I brought the truck back to the tailgate, I had picked it up by the bumper and the wheelie bar. And then when I went to move it, I had stuck my hand underneath the chassis and the chassis was burning hot to the point that I couldn't even touch that. So yeah, I'm a little now kind of gonna start being a little bit more aware. All right guys, so I got the truck on the tailgate and there's some heat going on there. It's nothing, well, yeah, it's pretty hot. So we're gonna keep those full throttle kind of blips to a minimum for now. Still enjoy the truck, just not put the motor through, I guess what I've been putting it through. Again, guys, it is super hot, super muggy today. I think it's somewhere around 29 degrees Celsius and I think it's about nine or 10 in the morning. What I'm gonna do now though, is just take some smaller jumps. Kind of just get an idea to see how this thing behaves in the air with small jumps. See if I can backflip it, just kind of putting up to the ramp and stuff like that. All right, see how we do. All right, guys, we're gonna try a simple backflip. See if we can get it with just kind of a... All right, that's what I wanted to do. See if I could do it with not a lot of speed. When you often drive like stunt tr trucks and stuff like that, you can pretty much pull up to a ramp and putt up to it and pull a backflip. That's taken everything to do it though. <laughs> but it's still doable. Right, just letting some people get out of the way. Obviously, I don't want to hit anybody, even though this lady seems to just want to keep walking around where I am. Oh, please stand right in the way. Yeah. What is this lady doing? All right, guys, we've got the rival MT-10 home. And as you can see, it's all cleaned up. It's back on the bench. And my thoughts are very positive. I'm actually, guys, kind of shocked at how well this truck drives. I was shocked by just how much it performed. And overall, for what the truck is, meaning 110 scale MT, four wheel drive, RTR. Yes, we swapped out the radio and all that kind of stuff. These electronics do work really well. I had to adjust the brake with the radio, but again, after I did that, guys, that fixed that issue. I am super impressed. Now, before though I get into anything, I got to address just a couple of minor things. One, these little caps, okay? What you want to do is don't ever take a pair of pliers or needle nose to them to tighten them. Why am I saying that? Because when I first got these, I had a really hard time trying to get them off. So I had used a pair of needle nose and I got them loose. And then when I was putting them back on, I kind of hand tightened them a bit. And then I used needle nose to just kind of snug them up. Now the problem is because these are just plastic and when you're using a pair of pliers, obviously there's more leverage on the nut with when you're using something like a pair of pliers or even just a wrench in general. And I unfortunately stripped two of them and not by much. And what happens now is when I try to untighten these, when I try to take them off, they don't come off. They'll just spin and spin and spin. So I have no choice now, but to go in with a pair of pliers and kind of pull and unscrew. 
which is just really friggin' annoying. So just when you, if you got this truck or when you get this truck, just hand tighten everything because the other two, that's what I've done now. I've just stayed with just tightening them up. They don't come off. You don't have to worry about it. So again, just guys don't use a pair of pliers. Now, the other thing with this truck is the tires. So it's always hard for me to really gauge a set of tires when I'm up at the top of my street there, because like I mentioned in every video, that ground, that dirt is really hard but it's also very thin. There's no bite. The tires really don't have a whole lot to dig into. So they just spin all over the place. Now I did notice the truck was a little bit sloppier than other cars I've had up there. But I mean, again, I'm kind of comparing it to some of the buggies I've been running up there lately that are obviously guys a little bit more planted. So I do have a fix for these tires and my fix is right here. These are the Method RC belted 110 scale tires. Now I've had these for quite a while and I've never been able to use them on a 110 scale truck because I never had any. So I've used them on buggies. I've used them on other things. I've ran 17 millimeter adapters, but these were designed for 3S, 4S trucks. And this will be the first time that I ever actually run them on. And as you can see guys, they're gonna be a perfect size. All right, so when you get the Method tires, guys, they do come with, I think it's three different sets of hub adapters. So you have a 12 mil, kind of an extended 12 mil, and then a 14 mil. I went with the extended one. It did look like your kind of normal size one would have worked, but I thought, hey, why not add a little bit more width? The only other thing, guys, too, I'm gonna mention about the MT-10 was with my setup in that center diff. It's kind of a tough one. I think if I was running this truck on a track where I always wanted to get power, where I always wanted to get really, you know, kind of instantaneous torque and not be wheeling all over the place. This would be fantastic. However, I always like a little bit of wheelie action, especially if I get really on the throttle. I don't want it like when I blip the throttle, but if I get on it, I want the truck to lift up. So probably before the next run, we'll pull that center diff and maybe just swap out the uh, that mixture that I have in there to 100 thou. But either way though, guys, that was awesome. This is a super fun truck. I get it now. I've never understood the, everybody that talked about the MT-10 always raved about it. And unfortunately guys, a lot of people that raved about it were also those same kind of YouTubers that rave about a few other brands or at least one specific other brand where everything that that brand makes they like. So I was always kind of skeptical with it, but I can say guys that the MT-10 is an absolute beast. And as always though, guys, if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up. Please subscribe and have a great day.